Understanding that, I think, is important because you have to be able to push back on people who say it's too difficult, there's no standard, or we, can't, you know, we, we don't want to use standards technology because we don't have terms, there aren't terms out there for everything we need. Then you can push back on them and say, well, use the terms that, where they are, exist, and where they don't exist, don't use them. So the semantic web, in a sense, is a technology which allows this balance between the, har the harmony uh, of common languages and, and the diversity of, uh, of many, uh, many different languages to be, to, uh, to be in, a, in a better balance. When you put data on the semantic web, in fact, you will be giving identifiers, URIs, things that start HTTP to all kinds of things, to potholes, to people, to government departments, people who have a public space, but certainly to roles, to organizations, to projects, to anything that is, uh, is useful for the government to give an identifier to it, then you can, give, uh, you can give it a URI, and a given department will give it that URI. A very important concept is that of linked data, that is that when data is published by one department, it will use the URIs for things which are under the control of another, of another department, it will use those URIs. So that somebody who's picking the department, the information up from department A will be able to then automatically pull in the relevant back, backing information about those objects which are defined by department B. We call that linked data, and the linked data is starting to take off now <coughs> on the semantic web. So basically, the, uh, the rules about using, uh, putting data on the web are very similar to the, work, the rules about putting information on the web in general. Use the standards, uh, use URIs to identify things, but th now we're doing it for putting information about objects and projects and, uh, uh, and things which we want to be able to process on our, uh, people across the world may want, want to pull into their Processing systems pull into spreadsheets, uh, put onto maps, and so on, uh, and use uh, use URIs. It's the same old old rules, in fact, that we had for the web. So I've talked briefly about the importance of putting about openness, and uh, perhaps already some of you, when I said, "Oh, we use a URI for person," well, uh, when to the certain extent that somebody has a, uh, pub a, a public role, then it's reasonable for them to have an identifier which allows people to find the things that they've said and the things that they've written and so on, and perhaps how you can contact them. Um, obviously, a few people might have thought, whoa, well, hang on, wait a moment, are we identifying people? What about privacy? Privacy, of course, is very important. And it's just one of the areas in which we have to be careful of misuse of information. There are lots of types of misuse information. It, it might be breaking copyright. It may be uh, using information which I've picked up as a, pers as a personal uh, listener. If I put something on my iPod and then I used it here to entertain you all on the public address system, in fact, I'd be breaking the rules because I got that for my perfect public enjoyment and I'm not supposed to use it for entertaining a hall full of people. There are many ways in which we get information for use, one particular use and we get and we in fact, are constrained by society, by laws, by ethics, by regulations, uh, in, into the way we use it. Perhaps many, many things, not all of them that we think of naturally as privacy, fall into this category. Think of it as appropriate use. Now, one way of looking at trying to prevent people misusing data is to prevent them getting it. But of course, in the iPod example, uh, I need that data for my personal listening. I have to use my own discretion to understand that I have that constraint that I don't then use it to power a concert for several thousand people. So access control for that wouldn't have worked. And it turns out for many things in government as well. Government agents have access to all kinds of data, which they've got maybe for the purposes of counter-terrorism counter or uh, crime prevention. And they have access to that for that purpose and not for other purposes. Or maybe for pursuing certain particularly bad sorts of crime, but not for pursuing people who have not, who've forgotten to renew their library books. So what's more important than trying to, and much more practical than trying to limit access uh, to all the, the most secret uh, and very sensitive information, is in general for information around gov uh, governments, uh, I think tracking, building systems which track where the data came from, tracking what we call the provenance of the data. So the provenance of the data 
is its source, but more importantly, it's the things associated with the source and how I got it. It may be, it, it affects how I can use it. It may be, uh, it may be licensing information, whether it was released with a Creative Commons license, for example, as commonly on the net. I can put something on there and say this it can be used for any non-commercial activity as long as you put my name, associate my name with it, uh, for example. Uh, but also it's associated with the trustworthiness of, in, of the information. So it's very important for me and for anybody I pass the data to to be able to explain how I got it so that if an important decision is eventually going to be made based on analysis made on that data, that somebody can go back and check and make sure that it's being based on appropriately sound sources. Of course, often the data is combined. So it may be that I got some data from one source, but then I combined it with something much more sensitive. So we have to be careful that, that our systems track when the data is. If, you've been, if I've been polluted, it might have been public data that I took in, but then I've added to it. I've processed it using data, which is only available for me for a very specific purpose. So I feel that we should be building systems which are aware of the provenance of data, track the acceptable uses, and that that is much more important than trying to do the, the typical security thing of blocking off people's access to it. In general, people will have access to all kinds of data, and they have to be responsible and uh, accountable for how they've used it. So we must build systems which allow them to show that they've, uh, they've used it in the right way. So in conclusion, let me uh, say... Governments should be open. They should use standards. This does not mean changing how existing systems work. It means just attaching standards compliance pieces to existing systems. And when we build those, these systems, which will be so powerful, we should be very careful to make sure they help us use data in appropriate fashion. Thank you very much for your attention.